guys, I've decided that I'm going to give stand-up comedy a try. And I've been practicing hard to be a comedian. Here's a joke that I've been working on. A skeleton walked into a bar and then it just broke down. Get it? Well, my humor may not be world class, but our skeletal system is with the way it holds together and doesn't just collapse. So how does that happen? Our body moves so gracefully and effortlessly that it seems to be made of one single piece. As we move through the skin to the deeper layer of muscles and ultimately reach the skeleton, we observe numerous bones that work in unison so perfectly that they give the impression of being a single structure. An adult human skeleton is made up of as many as 206 bones that form seven groups, namely the skull consisting of 29 bones, the vertebral column with 26 bones, the rib cage made up of 25 bones, the pectoral girdle with four bones, two forelimbs with 60 bones, the pelvic girdle divided into two parts and the two hind limbs made of 60 bones. Let us begin with the skull, which feels as though it were a single entity, but incredible as it may sound, it is an aggregate of 29 bones, 8 cranial, 14 facial and 7 associated bones. The upper portion of the skull is known as the cranium and is formed of eight flat bones. These bones are immovably joined through sutures. The main function of the cranium is to protect the brain. The facial and associated bones are 21 in number. Out of these 14 facial bones and seven associated bones, only the lower jaw bone is movable. The skull is connected by a pivot joint to the vertebral column. This is formed of two unique vertebrae that are the topmost vertebrae of the vertebral column. This joint helps in the side to side and nodding movements of the skull. It also helps in rotating the skull. The vertebral column itself is made up of 26 vertebrae. These vertebrae are divided into the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral and coccygeal vertebrae. Each vertebra is a small irregularly shaped bone which has a hollow central part. These vertebrae have joints called symphyses. These joints impart flexibility to the entire backbone and facilitate its bending and twisting in any way we want. Let us move on to the next part which is the rib cage. It is formed of the breastbone, sternum and ribs along with the vertebrae. This rib cage is made up of 12 pairs of ribs. These ribs can be divided into 7 pairs of true ribs, 3 pairs of false ribs and 2 pairs of floating ribs. The major function of the rib cage is to protect two vital organs, the heart and the lungs. Another important function of the vertebral column is to protect the delicate spinal cord encased within it. The pelvis located at the end of the vertebral column is an aggregate of three pelvic bones joined immovably. It is called the pelvic girdle and has two parts joined at the pubic symphysis. It provides protection to the abdominal organs. Most movements and the various postures of the body are majorly orchestrated by the limb movements. Our forelimbs or arms show a vast range of movements. They can move in any direction. This is made possible by the forelimb and the pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle is made up of the clavicle and the scapula. The scapula has a socket into which the ball of the humerus fits, thus forming a ball and socket joint. 
This allows the arm to rotate in any direction. The elbow joint is located between the humerus and the radius and ulna. It allows movement only in one direction and hence the name hinge joint. Next are the eight small wrist bones that help in moving the hand up and down or from side to side. They also enable us to rotate our palm. The five bones of the palm and 14 bones of the fingers add to the flexibility of the hand for precise movements like holding and gripping. Thus, the four limbs equipped with these joints help us perform actions like bowling, while for moving around, the hind limbs are indispensable. The upper end of the femur has a ball-like structure which fits into the socket of pelvic girdle. This forms another ball and socket joint, allowing the leg to move in various directions. The lower end of the femur articulates with the tibia and fibula, forming the knee joint. This is a hinge joint and has the patella or kneecap. The patella ensures that the legs move in one direction only. At the end of the fibula and tibia lies the ankle which possesses seven small bones that help in the up and down and sideways movement of the foot. The five bones of the foot and 14 bones of the toes provide grip and flexibility while walking. This aggregate of 60 bones of the hind limbs helps us execute exclusive movements like running. All of these 206 bones together work seamlessly in such synchronization that the body appears to be made of one single piece. To summarize, an adult human skeleton is made up of as many as 206 bones that form seven groups. The skull is an aggregate of 29 bones, eight cranial, 14 facial and seven associated bones. The vertebral column is made up of 26 vertebrae, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral and coccygeal vertebrae. 12 pairs of ribs are divided into 7 pairs of true ribs, 3 pairs of false ribs and 2 pairs of floating ribs. The pelvis located at the end of the vertebral column is an aggregate of 3 pelvic bones joined immovably. The aggregate of 60 bones of the hind limbs helps us to execute exclusive movements like running. Hey guys, now we are going to talk about something that has been a part of me ever since I've existed. It's something that's super close to me. The Axial Skeleton. To know which part of me that is, explore our other videos. Keep imbibing. We believe in you.